All right, we're out in Detroit. As you can see, Ford World headquarters right behind me. We're at the Mustang Memories Show. I'm Rev and Evan, and this is Mark Wilson of Ford Performance. But he's not with Ford Performance today. You're just enthusiast, Mark, right? I am. Yep, very much so. So I've seen his car before. I've wanted to do a video on it, and I think you guys are going to like it. 1971 429 powered Mustang, but it's one like you've never seen before. And I know you're saying, oh, come on, Ev. I've seen 71 Mustangs. I've seen green Mustangs. I've seen big block Mustangs. This car is different. Tell it us is. why. It is. So this car was originally sold in Japan to an uh, overseas uh, serviceman. And they had, Ford had a program back in the late 60s, early 70s where they exported vehicles over to the overseas markets because you had all these servicemen that really wanted muscle cars. Right. They had lots of money and they had nothing to do. So uh, what I found out was this is one of, I'm not sure exactly how many cars, but many cars that were shipped overseas, especially to the Asia-Pacific area, Thailand, right. China, uh, Australia. And uh, because they were sold to servicemen, they were allowed to get them through a special program that Ford had with the uh, military. And what was great about it was every vehicle was fully optioned. So, oh, wow. Yeah. So this one, it's got a 429 Cobra Jet. Automatic transmission, and I believe it's 26 other options. Wow. So, yeah, the only thing it doesn't have is a drag pack, which uh, because it has air conditioning, you couldn't get a drag pack with it. Right. So I guess Ford was partially, they wanted to show off their best overseas. Yep. And uh, I've also heard stories like my buddy Ray back home has a CUDA that he ordered from the PX in Vietnam. He still owns the car, a 340 1970 CUDA. What was the process for actually buying the car? Yeah, so actually, with a lot of the countries, they went through the um, commissary, and which is a, a basically it's a store for military right. people, and uh, that's how they initiate the process. And you order, the, you either order the vehicle, and then you wait X number of months to get it, or I believe that some of these were pre-ordered. But okay. by looking at the Marty reports, we're able to look at the dates, and all the orders went in at the same time. Oh so, wow! So we think that there were a couple order points during the year, and a dealership or whoever had the. Uh, the arrangement with Ford would just order a few vehicles and they just have them sitting there. Right, so this is Grabber Green Metallic? Yep, Is that is. right? Yep. And Magnum 500s, I mean, it's got all, it checks all the boxes it does. literally. It really, really does, literally. So before we get into lifting the hood, yeah. tell me about the condition of the car. Yeah, so this is a uh, restoration, in a mild restoration in process. Um, the paint on the body, some of it's original, so I'm kind of hesitant to repaint the whole car. Right. Um, which. You know, it has some scratches, little dings and dents, but to be honest with you, this is how I like it because, you know, I'm not worried about bringing it to a show or a cruise in or anything because I can just drive it. You can really it, drive it. it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Exactly. I, I'm gonna t I like it like this. Like, it's almost cool with the faded uh, sticker that would have been yep. there. Let's take a peek at this, uh, the 429 with the Ram Air setup. So I have gone through and it, we've had a mechanical restoration on the vehicle as well as the chassis uh, to make the vehicle much more reliable, right, and just get in and drive it. So... Originally, the vehicle, right now, it just turned over 51,000 miles, although right. the speedometer is in kilometers, so it's about 81, 82,000 kilometers. Okay. Um, but uh, had the engine rebuilt because it was leaking from every single gasket you can think of. Right. Um, did the transmission at the same time as well, just because I had it out. That's a smart move right there. Yep. Went through the whole front suspension, all the everything was dried out, so it just made sense to go through it all, steering and everything. So give me top to bottom the specs on the 429 because this is one of the Ford engines. I've never owned a 429, so I'm not up on what carb it had, what cam, and all that. So I actually, I'm biased, but I do believe that this is one of the most underappreciated engines from the muscle car era because when you think about the timeline of the muscle cars, both the big block 429 Cobra Jet as well as the small block Boss 351 engine, both came out in 71. And that was kind of the end of the era, right? Everybody else was starting to check out, and Ford just came in with these new engines. So when you when you look at the technology from back then, these are pretty much state of the art. Even today, the 429 Cobra Jet and the Clevelands are still fantastic engines. Yeah, and Ford still had high compression in 1971 when everybody else dumped a point or two of compression. Ford still had as high as, I think, 11 to this 1. This is 11.6, I think. So, so what carburetor? What's the cam lift? So the car, this is my only stock car that I own, except for one thing. Because I like to drive this car, I found that I was getting vapor lock a lot, uh -huh. and so I did put a sniper system on it, and That's this smart. thing is flawless now. So um, usually it does come with a Rochester carburetor, which for those viewers that know, right. it's a GM carburetor, right, the Quadrajet. Okay. Um, on the Super Cobra Jet, they did come with a Holly though, and um, other than that, the intakes were a little bit different because of the bore, you know, for right. the Quadrajet had the spread bore, and, and the Ford is the, the equal. 
Um, air conditioning. The valve covers are the same on both of them. Uh, heads are the same on both, except you had a solid lifter cam on the uh, Super Cobra Jet. Right. So it's a great motor. It really is. It's fantastic. Any idea how much horsepower it makes? Uh, I think we. Uh, yeah, it's. It was. I actually had it rebuilt to stock specs. Right. And it pushed over 400. Oh wow! So it was. Uh, it was pretty impressive, and the torque was at like 480, 490. It was really, really impressive. Right. So, I guess. We've seen 429 Mustangs before, but take us through the car. What made it special being an export car? And not only Japan, did these go anywhere else around the world at that time? They did go They did go in other countries. I mean, I think we've all heard of the original T5 Mustang, which, which yep. in Germany, they couldn't use the Mustang name, so they called it a T5. Um, it went all over the world, right? It went to Australia. They went to all over Europe. Um, I saw one in Thailand when I was there. Now, is this on military export or because a little bit of both? Okay, a little bit of both. Depending on the country, um, some countries seem like they they sell actually sold them, whereas other countries were like special order, like this one was. So, what do you say, guys? You want to go for a ride in a uh, 429 Mustang? Let's go. Let's do it. All right, we're rolling out, Mark. It's bullet row. Look at all these bullets. And it's late in the day. This was completely filled up before. Oh, look at that, 68. I never even made it over here, unfortunately. Broncos, what a fantastic day. What a fantastic event. Yeah, this is probably one of my favorite events just because you never know what's gonna show up here. The car, the cars here are just crazy. Lots of uh, X4 test cars. Right. And, and just lots of neat things. I was telling somebody earlier that when I first moved here, the, uh, probably the neatest car I've ever seen here was uh, the famed Green Hornet. Oh, just yeah. showed up and, and the guy drove it from his house and back then it was just, you know, a Shelby. I think I, think I saw it on Woodward. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Uh, yeah. So we're in Mark Wilson's 71 Mustang. So technically it's an export car. Yep, yep. I love sitting in these cars, the seating position, the length of the hood. That short windshield, the long hood. Yeah. This is one of the lowest Mustangs made. It's about five inches lower than the current uh, S550, S650. That was a fun fact. Yep. Yep. And actually, the other fun fact that we found out last night was that the uh, it's no longer the longest Mustang ever made. The, uh, the Dark Horse beats it by 0.2 of an inch. So, really? Yep. Yep. Is that because of the wing and the... I'm not sure. I wonder what sure. makes the Dark Horse longer than a GT500. Yeah. 71 through 73 owners probably won't care. They're just happy not to have the biggest uh, biggest horse right, right in, in the stable. So obviously this is a 9-inch, but what gear you got in the back? So this one originally came with 325s, and I think it's been modified. I think it's got 370 or 370s. Gotcha. A little more punch. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fun car. It's very comfortable. You know, for the old cars, this is probably one of the better driving of the 65 to 73 cars just because it's got the competition suspension, um, nice wheelbase. Right. Um, it's got the, the better steering than the, the 65 to 70 cars, uh, front disc brakes. Now, in stock trim, how would these run compared to, uh, say, quarter mile against a Boss 351? Yeah, so that's the big controversy, right? What's faster, a Boss 351 or a, or a Ford Frank Cobra Jet? Right. Um, of course, all the Boss, Boss 351 owners will tell you that the Boss 351 is faster. Just look at the uh, just look at the times in the magazines. Yeah. But uh, fun fact is that there weren't any Super Cobra Jet equipped Mach ones ever road tested. Okay. So um, the people that have driven both say that the, the Super Cobra Jets are faster than the Boss 351s. But the Boss 351 is still a really healthy, healthy right. car, right? For a small block to be as fast as that thing is, is crazy. Well, those that things, was awesome. those things were just beasts. We tested one at Muscle Mustangs against a '95 Cobra R. Oh, that's right. Yep, I remember that. I think I ran, uh, I think I ran 1250s in it, and it was a, I think it was a 350 gear car. If that thing had a 411 in it, I think it would have went low 12s. Yeah. Was it slicks or street tires? That was, um, that was on street tires, I believe. Nice. That's healthy. Yeah. It's really moving. Really smooth ride. It is. It wow. is. It's great. You know, and, and uh, I've done a lot of work because when I first got it, it wandered all over the place, and there's still some rattles here and there. I got to work out of it. You got like no input in the steering, which no, it's, it's it's one hand, couple fingers, right? It's great. It really is. I mean, it's, it's, it's a really
really fun car to drive and uh, it's just a joy to cruise in. Yeah, you don't, you don't buy these cars. They're not corner carvers or nothing like that, right? They're just fun cars to cruise in. And, uh, you know, I think, although it's the largest engine I have in, in my uh, herd of Mustangs, it's uh, probably the slowest one by, by a bit. But, uh, you know, it's not, it's, I, don't, I don't build it for speed. I build it just to cruise and, and enjoy the car. Oh, totally. I mean, the wagon, the 71 wagon that we have is easily the slowest car that I own. And it gets more attention than anything else. Absolutely. Uh-oh. So Mark, point out some things to me that make this car an export car. So probably the, the one item that people notice the most right away is the turn signals on the front fenders. Okay. And a great piece of history about that piece is uh, that's actually from one of the greatest Japanese muscle cars of that time. You know what that is? Would that be the uh, Nissan GTR? It is the Skyline. Yep. So that piece actually comes from a Nissan Skyline. Really? Yep. How about that, huh? That's wild. And you can still buy those from Nissan too, by the way. So, that was a lucky guess. Yep. So um, beyond that, if you go into the hood, um, part of this we can't see, I'll describe it, but there's a whole other wiring system in the car that lights up the turn signals and also has a fog light system that lights up the lights underneath as well as two of the uh, tail lights in the back. Wow. In addition to that, uh, you can see it's got just a decal here. It talks about charging um, when you're jumping the car. Uh, I had that reproduced so that uh, it could uh, you know, keep, it, keep the original look. Can you read that for us? Uh, I can't. It says uh, when you when you jumpstart the car, realize it's 12 volt system or something like that. I had gotcha. somebody from Japan um, translate for me. Um, the most noticeable thing from a chassis standpoint is it's got the badge here from the importer. Right. And um, this is actually a pretty famous company, Mara Marambu Marambu. Um, also has a chassis number right here. Now a lot of these cards that I found, I found about 14 of these all over the world. Most of the people that have these don't even know what they are. They just think it's a 420 Cobra Jet Mustang. A lot of them are in Australia. Okay. Um, there's still a few in Japan. And there's a couple I found here in the US. Um, and I look for these things on it. Usually the side marker light's not there. The wiring harness is usually there, the extra wiring harness, but nobody knows what it's for. Right. Um, this, this right here is always here. And that's the, usually the first thing I look for. Okay. Um, and the plates are usually missing. Were you seeking a unique car like this, Not or it just all. happened to come up and you, and you were like, I gotta have it? Not at all. No, this one I actually got lucky. I was able to uh, do a trade for this car. Okay. And so I was, uh, I was quite happy with it, so. No, but I wasn't looking for this. I, actually, the funny story is though, when I was a kid, this is what I wanted as a kid. I wanted a 71 429 Mach 1, right. but I couldn't find one. I lived in Minnesota. And the only thing I could find was rusted out. So right. I ended up buying a 72 convertible, which is not even close to this. So let's cruise down the side yep. of the car. So um, you see Magnum 500s. Uh, yep. This is actually an NOS set that I had. I just put this on a couple weeks ago. Nice. Um, the side mirrors. Are I these 15s? These are 15s. 15s, yep. OK. Yep. So on the uh, the side mirrors are also modified. This is probably one of the strangest things I've, I, I, I didn't even notice this at first. And actually, Mike Berardi pointed this out to me that they shave down the front edge of it. Uh, usually it's a pointy, a pointy uh, front end. And I don't know if it was for pedestrian impact. I have no clue why they did it, but right. they're definitely shaved down on both sides. Less blunt if you happen to clip a pedestrian right. going down the road. Or... Right, I don't know. But um, a lot of the cars I've seen either have one or the other done. Some right. of them don't have either one, but there are a few that have both of them. Interior is a deluxe interior. Um, I actually uh, went through and just restored this over the winter. Um, you have the original comfort weave material on the seats, right. uh, as well as the insert as well. Pretty unusual to see them like that. Fold down rear seat. Fold down rear seat. Uh, and then as far as options go, it's got everything. Um, tilt wheel, rim blow, console, 
Um, it's got deluxe seat belts, but they're out of the vehicle right now being restored. Power windows, which is pretty unusual to see on these vehicles. Um, one, of the, one of the neat features that a lot of people miss on 71s that I wasn't even aware of until someone pointed out is the door speakers on a 71 actually have one single bar here to support it. You can see this one's broken. Um, they all break because you just touch them with your feet and they just crack. But on 72s, 73s, there's actually two support bars and all the reproduction pieces you buy are like that as well. So Power windows. Power windows, actually power windows front and rear. Oh wow. And what's kind of neat about that is on a regular Mach 1, the rear windows are fixed. Really? Yeah, so the only way you could get the rear window to go down is if you had power windows. So if you ever see a 71, 73 Mach 1 with the rear window down, it's got power windows. Fun fact right there. Yep. Going to the rear of the vehicle, uh, rear spoiler. Um, I do have the trim pulled out of it right now. I'm having it uh, re-anodized. So. Right. Um, going through that, it's got rear defrost, which is kind of unusual to see. So another one of the unique features on the car is that it has a power rear antenna. And that was, uh, I believe it was something that was acquired by the Japanese government huh. because they couldn't have the uh, exposed antenna uh, sitting up all the time. Um, another item that I've noticed, and I've seen two cars with this, I, so, and I'm not sure if it's stock or not, but the side markers are usually red. On this car and one other car I've seen, they're, they're a uh, orange color. It's actually a Ford part from right. a Galaxy, I think it is. Um, Obviously on the back, the most noticeable thing are, are these wired or are these just No, those are, those are just, uh, they're just reflectors. Okay. So um, they look kind of goofy. That's usually the thing that people come up to me and say, why'd you ruin this car? I was you literally know? gonna ask you, do people come up to the show and go, why do you have like bicycle reflectors yep. on the back it, of your Mach it, 1? It happens, believe me. Uh, license plate, I was able to find kind of a quasi-custom license plate, rocking 429. Oh, um, look at that. Yep, a little different. And the state of Michigan allows you to use old plates. Yep. So I kind of looked for something for about two years, and that one popped up on eBay, and I uh, snagged it. So. That's cool. Florida does the same thing. Yep, yep. So the big question is, uh, I see this thing has an 8-track. Oh, yeah. What's in the tape deck? Well, what do you think? Well, Best I've, album of 71. I've seen a lot of albums that okay, I don't but, like. And there's so many potential uh, options. I know, like, all right, so some of my favorite bands, 71, would have been Zeppelin. But uh, the Doors, of course, I love the Doors. Winner, winner, there chicken dinner. Go. There you go. L.A. woman. So, in my opinion, one of the best albums is 71. Absolutely agree with that. Yep. And it's funny, because that's probably the most common question that people ask on the car is... Really? Yeah, first of all, they're like, what is that? And I'm like, it's A-Track. Well, then what's in there, right? Well, I've seen Sam and Dave a lot because of the Blues Brothers. Yep. And uh, then you generally see people's favorites. And I have seen where people will have a case of... Remember the old fold-open yep. cases yep. With, with all the A-Tracks? And if you've never seen an A-Track before, it literally had eight tracks. That was it. This is an A-Track old school this is not a cd it's not a uh not a cassette a cassette it's not a floppy this is an eight track and this is how you bought your music in the 70s or the early 70s anyway yep pretty cool yep very cool that one's in nice shape too yep actually it took, it took me a while to find one in good shape that's awesome um other options on the vehicle i think uh we talked about deluxe belts uh it's got the interior lighting package what's up with the uh switch you got a couple switches there so there are there are a couple switches here um You've got the, this is for the rear defrost, and then um, there were some switches I've taken out because I'm redoing the, the export wiring harness on it right now that go into, into a couple of the holes here, and they have uh, a secondary horn switch, right? a, uh, a uh, antenna to make the antenna power antenna go up, Nice. and then also for that other fog lights I talked about, it's, a, it's another uh, switch to turn those on as well. Awesome. Yep, pretty cool. That's cool.